Hello and welcome to FreePhotoshop.com and this week's free video tutorial looking at creating and using actions here inside of Photoshop. Now just in case you're wondering what actions are, they're basically a form of automating long and complex tasks on multiple images. An action is a series of recorded commands that you can play back onto different images in order to save time. And what we're going to do here in this video is create a basic action test it to make sure it works and then use it on a batch of photographs I have waiting for us inside the bridge. For now I have this image open on screen. It's a photograph taken from the entrance to Arches National Park in Utah in the United States and we're going to start with a scenario of wanting to email these photographs off to a friend or a family member and instead of just sending off the original images that are going to be fairly big files because after all, they were taken in this instance on a 5 megapixel digital camera, so we're talking a couple of megs for each photograph. We want to downsize them and add a border around the outside just to make them a little more presentable to those that are going to view them. Now if you did this the manual way, then you'd need to carry out exactly the same modifications to each image. And if you have, say, 50, 100 or even thousands of images, then it's going to take quite literally days. Instead, we're going to create an action to do all the work for us. So I'm going to start things off by closing the navigator, the histogram and the info palette up here, and then reposition the remaining two palette clusters. Not something I'd usually do, by the way, but I want you to be able to see the actions palette over here and the layers palette down here. Now you can see that I already have some action sets available to me here. Photoshop does come as standard with a whole load of custom actions, to access them, all you need to do is come up to the little wing menu icon here and select that. And then come down inside this menu and select the actions from the bottom here you want to load up. For now we're going to create our own action. And as a rule, all actions must live inside an action set, which we can create by clicking the little folder icon down here at the bottom. And that's going to prompt you to name the set. So I'll go ahead and call it Free Photoshop's actions and then click OK to create it. Now with the set active I'm going to click the new action button and now we've got to give the action itself a name and it's always best to specify the most accurate name we can just for keeping things tidy if not for anything else. I'm going to go ahead and call this resize 1024 with frame we can also choose a different set to have this action in. I'm going to stick with the one we've created a few moments ago. We can also set a shortcut by assigning a function key along with either the shift or control keys or both. That would be the shift and command keys if you were watching this on the Mac and with a Mac in mind. And finally you can assign a color to the action just to make it easier to spot when these things start building up. When you're happy with what you've entered as a name here, then it's time to hit the record button. So we now have entered the record mode and every significant action we carry out will be recorded by Photoshop inside this particular action. And just to note by the way, recording actions is not a time sensitive operation. So there's no need to hurry through any of the actions you want to perform. You can just sit back and think about what your next move is going to be. In this case though, I already know what actions I want to carry out, so I'll start by resizing the image, and I'll do that by coming up here to the Image menu and selecting the Image Size dialog box. Now I'm going to make sure that Scale Styles, Constrain Proportions and Resample Image are all ticked, and I'm going to change the resampling method to Bicubic Sharper, Then I'm going to come up here to the Width option and input 1024. And as a result of having constrained proportions turned on, we'll automatically reduce the height by the same ratio, which turns out to be 768 pixels. I'm going to hit OK to accept the changes I've made, and not only do our changes get applied to the image, but they get recorded over here inside the Actions palette. So you can see that we now have an entry inside our action called Image Size. And if I twirl open the Image Size hierarchy, I can see all the information that's been saved as part of that action state. So we've got the width, the fact that we want the scale styles and constrained proportions, 
and finally that we want to use by cubic sharper interpolation when downsampling the image. Now we're still recording by virtue of this little record button still being active, but we didn't record the fact that I twirled open the image size information because it's not recognized as a significant action. The same goes for zooming. If I go ahead and zoom out here to the 100% view size and then back into the 50% view size, we don't record those details over here in the actions palette either because they're not significant operations. There are some other things that the actions palette doesn't record, things like the pen tool and anything you do with the brush tool, would you believe? So things like the history brush, the clone tool, the dodge tool and the healing brush, for example, will not be recorded into an action. Anyhow, we're still recording, so let's get started with this border we want to add. I'm going to go ahead and select the entire image by coming up here to the select menu and choosing the all command and then I'll come back up here to the select menu once again and choose this time the modify command and select the contract option from there. We'll input something like 25 pixels here and click OK. Then we'll come back up here to the select menu once again back into modify and this time choose the feather option and we'll add say a 5 pixel feather to the selection outline and hit the OK button. Then we'll come back up here to the select menu which you're probably sick of by now. There are keyboard shortcuts available by the way and you can use keyboard shortcuts inside of actions but I'm just keeping things simple here by using the menu items. But this time we're going to choose the inverse command and we're now selecting the border of the photograph rather than the interior area. Now I want you to click on the new layer icon down here in the layers palette and then come up here to the edit menu and select the fill command. Now we want to fill with a pattern and I'm going to select the wood option and if you're not seeing this particular pattern or you want to suss out an alternative then you can click on the wing menu over here and just select a group to load up. I'm going to stay with the wood version here though Next I'll make sure that the blending mode is set to normal and the opacity is all the way up at 100%. Then I'll click OK to apply this fill to the confines of the selected area of the image. Now we've got two things left to do. Firstly I'm going to revisit the select menu and choose to deselect the image. And that's great. Finally I'm going to double left click on the layer name to change the name of the layer to frame. OK that's cool. Now I can see the image without the frame if I click the eyeball here at the side of the frame layer and then I can see it with the frame by once again clicking that eyeball. It's a nice little effect we've got going there I'd say. Now we've finished creating the action I'm going to go ahead and tell Photoshop that we finished creating the action so it can stop recording all the operations I'm performing on screen here. And I can do that by hitting the stop button down here at the bottom of the actions palette. OK, so let's just increase the size of the actions palette here and then just twirl up the first operation inside the actions we created. So now inside the action we created, we have a list of recorded commands that we can apply as one action to any image we want to. But before we move on to that, let's just review the steps we've created here. So the first operation we recorded was the change of the image size and remember we can twirl open any of these steps to see the exact details relating to the operation. Next we created the selection, then we contracted the selection, then we feathered it, then we inversed it and this time we notice we don't get an option to twirl open the command because there are no options associated with it. OK, so then we created a new layer then we filled it and if we twirl this command open we'll see the exact pattern we used to create the frame. Next we have another entry of set selection and this time we know that we set the selection to none so we deselected it. Then we went ahead and renamed the layer so we'd know what was going on inside the image just for reference of course. Now the following two steps are when we turned the visibility of the layer off and then on again to see what it looked like without the frame. No problem with doing that except we've added it as part of the action. So every time we run this action in the future, it's going to turn the eyeball off or the visibility off and then turn the visibility back on again. And it's all going to happen so fast we're not going to notice it. So in other words, 
it's a really inefficient way to run an action. It's going to take longer to complete, and even though the file size of these actions are minuscule, there's never a good way to make a file larger than it has to be. Now, I know in reality it's not going to make too much of a difference, but the more complex your actions become, the harder it is to keep track of what's going on inside them as regards to editing them and also sending them off for other people to use. Because you can save these actions out and email them to somebody else with Photoshop and let them load them up and use them on their own images. And as it happens, we can delete steps from an action by simply dragging them down to the delete icon in the same way as we would inside the history or the layers palette, for instance. So I'm going to drag the hide and show current layer operations to the delete icon and they've been deleted from our action. Now so far so good. The trouble is though, because I want to run this action on around about 10 photographs, I don't want to have to save them all individually myself. So I'm going to include the saving process in the action as well. So with that in mind, what I need to do first of all is start recording. And it's important to know that we will always commence recording after the currently selected action step. So we want to make sure that the last action step is active, which in this example is going to be the set current layer step, where of course we renamed the frame layer. Now I'm going to hit the record button once again, and we're now recording our operations once again. So with that in mind, I'm going to come up here to the file menu and select the save as command. That's going to open up the Save As dialog box, and I'll just make sure that I've got that on screen here. It is a fairly large dialog box, as you can see. Now the trouble here is that if I give this image a new name, then every time I run this action, it's going to try saving the image into not only the same path, but it's also going to try saving it with the same name. So the action will either fail, or worse still, it'll overwrite the previous versions inside the folder. And that's no good, of course, because instead of having all of our completed and saved images sitting here inside this folder waiting for us, we'll only find one image because that's overwritten the previous one we saved. And the previous one we saved will have overwritten the image previous to that one, and so on and so forth. So what we're going to do here is first of all navigate to the Actions Tutorial folder, and you can create your own Actions Tutorial folder if you want to, or you can just follow along with me on screen here. Then I'm going to hit the new folder icon up here in the top of the dialog box. Mac users will find this a little different, but the principle will still be the same. The other thing you could do is to switch to the Adobe dialog box by hitting this button down here. But because, of course, we're still recording our action, we don't want to go ahead and do that right now. So for now, I'll stick with Windows and name my new folder Arches, NP for National Park, Emails and then accept that name change. Now I'll navigate inside the folder and then I'll change the file type to JPEG. No point in saving as a PSD file if we're just emailing these images for somebody else to view. We also want to keep the file size to a minimum so uh, a PSD file will not do the job here. Now that's inserted the word copy after the file name but that's fine. The main thing is we've left the file name set to Photoshop's creation now I'm going to go ahead and hit the save button, which of course brings up the JPEG saving options. And because we're sending this by email, I'm going to set the quality to high, and then just make sure we're saving as baseline optimized, and then hit OK. Finally, I'm going to come up here to the file menu and select the close command, which will prompt me to save the image once again. And if I go ahead and save it here, then I'm going to overwrite the original file, which is something I definitely don't want to do, courtesy of the fact that we've downsampled the image and added a frame over part of it. So I'll click No, and if you're working along with me, maybe with your own images, then I'd urge you to click No as well. Now we need to stop the action recording, and we'll do that by selecting the Stop button over here on the Actions palette. OK, now for the moment of truth, we're going to test the action and then run it on a batch of images we're hoping to email out to Aunt Fanny or whoever we're sending them to. I'm going to make sure that we've got the action itself active. Then I'm going to hit Control shift o or Command shift o on the Macintosh to open up the bridge. And I'm going to select the second image here. Remember, we've already worked on the first image and saved it inside the correct folder for emailing later. 
I'm also going to shift click on the final image and then hit Control or Command O to open up all 11 images, answering the bridge's questions along the way. Yes, we do want to open all 11 images at once. And it's going to take a moment or two here to open all the files successfully inside of Photoshop. And this is a good opportunity to tell you that in addition to deleting and adding steps inside an action, you can also edit a step as well. And you can do that by control or command double clicking through the steps to play them one at a time and then just double clicking on the step when you reach it to bring up any dialog boxes that are available. Now I think we're ready to roll. I'm going to come over here to the actions palette and press the play button and there we have it. You may be able to see all of the action steps being applied and the noticeable changes of the image on screen. Then of course it vanishes from view as the action saves and closes it for us. And that's great. I'm going to press the play button to once again make changes to the next image. And I can just sit here pressing the play button and see how quickly this actually moves through the processes. It doesn't follow any time sensitive issues that we had when recording the action. It just plays it back step by step. And that's why it's important just to take your time when recording an action because you don't suffer from any time delays when you're actually playing the action back. And you can also start to imagine the time we're saving by creating this action and not applying all of these modifications to each image one by one in a really slow manner, as we usually would when we're doing things manually. And as I said before, we can load and save actions at will. You'll notice that we have an ATN extension so that we have a fully fledged file format for the actions command that you can send to other people. You can also create an action in one version of Photoshop and then load it up and play it in another. And don't forget, you can make actions as complicated and as long as you like. OK, I'm going to press Control Shift O here on the PC. That's Command Shift O over on the Mac to open up the bridge. Then I'll navigate inside the Arches NP email folder and there we have all 12 of our images. I'm going to select any of these images to open up inside Photoshop and there we see our fading frame with the image inside. If we wanted to change the name of all 12 of these files at once then we could use the batch rename command inside the bridge to carry that task out and if you want more information or instructions on how to do that then check out my batch renaming tutorial available on the freephotoshop.com website. It'll also be links from this page that you're viewing this tutorial from um, so that you've got an easy form of access to it. If you're not viewing this on freephotoshop.com then I'd suggest you come on over. It's the only place to find all of the tutorials I've ever created in their original high quality production. In the meantime, I hope you've found this tutorial right here on freephotoshop.com to be helpful. Thanks very much for watching.